Hi, y'all. Oh, that was so sweet. Um, so I'm going to start by asking for your grace and forgiveness right away, because I decided I was going to tell this story about two hours ago. And I was inspired by the events of this week. So I am going to tell you the story of my abortion when I was 17 years old. You can laugh all you want. Feel free to just belly laugh away at this story. It's hilarious. Um, so I think it's important that I first introduce myself because it really does set the scene. Uh, my name is Mary Teresa Shaughnessy. I'm the fifth of 10 children from Boston. I went to 12 years Catholic school and my mother went to mass daily, mass daily, daily, every day. So I think that you can infer that my parents were not annual donors to Planned Parenthood. Um, so it's 1983, and I, um, I'm a junior in high school, and I had my first real boyfriend, and he was older, he was 21, and uh, he had a car. <laughs> Yeah, wackiness ensued. Um, here's another part of the story that I'm going to ask for a little grace. I'm going to skip over the part of how I got to 13 weeks of pregnancy without knowing I was pregnant. I'm just going to ask for your, your grace uh, on that. Uh, that's another story. And... Um, but there I was. I was 13 weeks pregnant, and I did not know a single person who identified as pro-choice. They just did not exist in my world. And so, thankfully, I was a part of a youth program, and one of the counselors' name, her name was Rona Tannenbaum. She was not at the 10.30 folk mass on Sunday every week. Um, so I took a leap of faith, and it was a, I will say, it, it was scary. It was scary to come out to her and to ask for help. Uh, but I did, and Rona Tannenbaum remains this day to me an angel because she helped and she helped with a lot of logistics. And so I had four days to pull it together to get myself an appointment because I was coming up on that ceiling of 14 weeks. Um, the logistics, let me fill in a little bit more detail. Uh, I lived in Massachusetts and in 1983, uh, Massachusetts was a parental consent state. So I had two choices. I could ask my parents to sign a permission slip for me to get an abortion. I just, I don't know. I, I didn't think that they would really sign that permission slip. Um, or I could arrange to leave the state, which is what Rona helped me do. She helped me get the appointment, but she could not provide the transportation. So I had to figure out how to get to New Hampshire. Uh, so I called um, the now ex-boyfriend, uh, and I told him and asked him for a ride, and he had to work. They told me I couldn't say certain words here, so I'm going to not say mother. Okay. So, um, so I had to call a friend, and I had to be like, you have to help me. I have to, I, I don't want you to ask any questions right now. I just want you to say yes. And this friend said yes. And so on Monday morning, I dressed in my Catholic girl 
uniform and I went out the door as if to go to school. And I didn't go to school. I met my friend at the Friendlies uh, across the street from school and they brought me to New Hampshire. Um, the next part of the story, I don't remember a lot of details of being in New Hampshire. I don't think it's because it's trauma. I just really don't think that I remember. What I do remember is driving home in a total fog. Uh, and that night I sat at my family's dinner table and had dinner with this tremendous secret. And uh, they were none the wiser. So for about three years, I carried around incredible guilt and shame. And it took me three years to figure out, and this is an important part of the story, it took me three years to figure out that the reason why I was feeling guilty was because I didn't feel guilty. My whole world was telling me I was a murderer, but I felt like I had taken control of my life. I was so proud, so proud of myself that at the age of 17, I could pull it together and have the agency and capacity to get myself to New Hampshire in order to get health care that allowed me to take control and have control of my life. So here's my craving. This is a story about cravings. I crave a world in which women do not have to jump state lines in order to exercise health care, in order to take control of their own damn lives. That's my craving. That no 17-year-old will ever have to go through what I went through. That's my craving. And with my craving, I give an invitation. I stood up on the stage and I told you the story of my abortion. And all of you women out there who have a similar experience, it is time we tell our stories. Thank you.